Open up your brown book, baby It's for you, it's for us The fantasies, no one can judge us No one can judge us, this is for us Open up your brown book, baby Hey y'all, hey, it's your girl Shay Baby, and welcome back to another episode here at the Brown Book Series. Man, oh my God, I love, love, love this next young lady. She's like my new best friend, you know what I'm saying? So just let everybody out there, you fuck with Nana, you fuck with Shay Baby, you know what I'm talking about? But but y'all know what's up, it's Wednesday night, it's six o'clock, so I'm going to give y'all a minute to go get your drink on. Um, we'll be drinking tonight, y'all, you know me. I'm a tequila girl, so we on it tonight, y'all. <laughs> so, 6 o'clock, go tell your friends that the Brown Book Series is on. And we'll be right back with Wall Street Journal, uh, USA Today bestselling author, Miss Nana Malone. Brown Book Series presents Raw, Raw, Raw. Romance Readers and Writers Experience. Save the date. October 28th and 29th, 2022. Brown Book Series presents Raw, Romance Readers and Writers Experience. October 28th and 29th, 2022. At the Western Old Town of Alexandria. Featuring some of your favorite romance authors. Brenda Jackson, Beverly Jenkins, Iris Bowling. Deborah Fletcher Mello, and so much more. The Raw Experience will include book signings, meet and greet, photo ops, vendors, shopping, surprise celebrity guests, and live performances. Registration is wide open at brownbookseries.com. Save the date, October 28th and 29th, 2022. Brown Book Series presents R R R R A A W W Experience. And we are back. You know what? Looking at that that commercial, that was my first time thinking that Robin um Covington and Kathy Douglas. They look like they could be sisters, so I'm gonna have to ask one of them later on. Me and Kathy cousins, so I want to know is Robin her big sister. <laughs> And hello, everybody. Please welcome to the stage for the very first time here at the Brown Book Series, my friend, Wall Street Journal, um, and USA Today's bestseller author, Miss Nana Malone. Oh, so excited to be here. Yay. I'm so excited that you are here, girl. Nana, you are so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Girl, I had to put on a face this morning. Like, I had to, like, Sit off there. I was like, no, you cannot go on <laughs> makeup. Let's do something. Girl, with your honey, you, you cute, honey. You, you're cute, honey. I like Thank all you. of that. Love all of that. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. I'm gonna ask you this because I have asked a couple people, or I think I did, or I just didn't get around to, or I, you know, I smoked, so I probably don't remember what they said. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> girl, so <laughs> Wall Street Journal. Yes. What is, I, I, I just never, I'm like, okay, USA Today, I get it. New yes. York Times, I get it. Wall yes. Street Journal, what is, is it the same thing? Like, the Wall yeah. Street people reading your book? Like, how? <laughs> well, no, the Wall Street Journal is just a newspaper. So they have, like, they have their romance list or their e uh, their ebook and back list as well. And so I was part of um, a project a couple of years ago now. Um, and we hit the Wall Street Journal on that one. Oh my God, because I was just like, you know, you hear about just those main three, like are those yeah. like the top three? Yeah, does it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, New York Times is still king, but I mean, New York Times is so funny because everyone's like, people make it a goal and they're like, I, I want to hit New York Times. And I was like, guys, that's not a goal because that list is curated. There's nothing you can actually do. <laughs> it's not like it's a, these are the Wall Street Journal and USA Today are like a raw numbers. You either, if you have the numbers, you hit. If you don't, you don't hit. Um, for that week, New York Times is curated, so you can have the numbers and still not hit, which I've seen happen to many authors, and it produces many tears. <laughs> but it's a curated list, and you can't do anything about it. What? That's crazy. New York, New York Times, I, yeah. I never knew that. You know, and I see because you, you it's, it's not that many, y'all. I'm just so I, <laughs> that you guys didn't they were any kind of title, right? And I was just like. How do they get that? It's like that you have to sell so many um, units. You have, yeah. you know, I was just like, damn, that's different. In a week. And so like, I mean, the the, the time frames change. Sometimes it's Sunday to um, Saturday. Sometimes it's Monday to Sunday. So you, you have to know which list you're trying to hit. 
And then it's in that week, the most number of copies. Yeah. So what's the hardest list to get on? The New York Times? New York Times. By far. the hardest? Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, because they used to have an ebook at a paperback list, and then they took away the ebook list. And then the yeah, list was longer. So. Well, because a lot of indie authors were hitting it. And so they were mad. They were big mad. <laughs> But no, because the list the list used to be dominated by indie authors, dominated, wow. and people were mad, and so they took it away, and then they made the list, and it, like it was a certain length, and then they shortened it recently in the last like two or three years to like fifteen, and then it's still P.S. It's still curated, <laughs> so there's yeah. nothing you you like you have to have you should you have to have numbers, but no. You, you can't see what, like, there are people who have made a list who sold less copies than right. people who didn't make the list. So it's like, it's curated. And once I realized that, I was like, that's not a goal. That's a dream. So. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Cool. I, I, you know, I was like, I'm going to ask Nana about this list, honey, because I'm confused on how this, you know, how this thing works. I know that, you know, a lot of them, when they have the new releases, like, the, you know, that first week is, you know, it's pushing hard, trying to get these sales oh, yeah. up. But I was just like, well, damn. Is the list the same? You know, if you you know the units that you sell, like, do you have to like sell this minute to get on this list or this minute to get on this you list? You don't know. So okay. I mean, you have no way of knowing. So in the week I hit um, USA Today, for example, for my book Sexy and Stilettos, I, yeah. I didn't even know I'd hit. You know, like I I I had no idea. I just I'd had a book bug deal. And I've been pushing hard and like making ads and doing all the things that you do. And someone on Twitter told me, and I was like, what? <laughs> um, and so I, and I, I just, I, of course, like there was no one home. So there I am screaming <laughs> in the house. And the dog's like, oh, Mommy, this is great. Are you going to throw the ball? You're right. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> So yeah, and so like you just, but like I could, I've hit that number again for sales for another book and not made the list, and so it's like it's in reference to other people, and so like that's it's constantly the game, and you, you yeah. most of us like have an idea. So like if we have friends who hit the list, we're like, oh, how many units did you sell to like hit? So like we'll cut, we'll try and gauge. Got you. And if you're making a run, you're trying to be like, okay, I'm making a run, and you do all the things, and then you're trying to like hit within a range, and then you cross your fingers. Okay, I like that. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. All right, let's see here. So, Nana Malone, <laughs> what it is? I'm so excited that you're here. What is it in like? What's it like in the day in the life of Nana outside the literary world? We're gonna get to that in a little bit, but like, what is just? I wake up and then this is what I do. You know, like oh, what, is, what um, is your world like? So exciting! I've just got it's. Just you know, I'm doing black girl bare minimum. Um, no, uh, it's no way. <laughs> I mean, I mean, honestly, it's I wake up, I do physical therapy, um, or work out, one of the two things, and then um, I spend a lot of time yelling at my daughter <laughs> to get a move on. Um, and then like my husband and I are fighting over the shower, and then he's like, "We can, we can, we can conserve water." I'm like, "Nobody has time for that. We have to go." <laughs> And then um, now that like my daughter's back in school physically, like the routine has started back again. Um, so the working out is good that I've got that routine going back again. But yeah, once they're out of the house, then it's um, I usually sit down to get to work. So right now, if it's an editing month or week or whatever, then um, I try and do at least half of my edits first. If I can get like, especially in the morning, if I can get started on that first, right. it'll be a good day. And then like, like the admin people don't understand that like as an author so much of what you do has nothing to do with book production i heard that though i heard like you know once you get the writing out the way it's like the the rest of it is just Ooh. crazy and everything takes 17 steps like it's just it, the sheer volume of admin the sheer volume and like you have like these massive to-do lists and yeah, mm -hmm. you can get crushed even with a PA or two or three. I know people with three PAs and they're still crushed under the weight of stuff that has to go into running a business. It's hard. It is hard. I have one PA. I have two. And one of them, she's my niece. She's like, auntie, we have to talk. <laughs> Are you breaking out with me? 
She's right? Like, it always feels like a breakup. You're like, it, it, right. She's like, girl, I, this is a lot. I'm like, it is, but it's fun, right? She's like, no. I'm like, oh. <laughs> she was like, no. Yeah, no, it's a, yeah, the admin of it is a bitch. I tell people like, mm, y'all just give me a minute, okay? <laughs> It's you, you, you give me like, a you, minute. You you don't understand, and especially and like when you first start out, even if you first start out in indie, right? Like right. the things you do, that number is less. But it's like when you know better, you do better. You better yeah. Then the number of things you have to do increases. Yeah. And then when you know more, it, it, oh yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. It, it's a lot. Now, did you start out indie and went to um, publishing, or are you considered a hybrid author? Like. I a hybrid i started mm -hmm. out i sold my first book game set match um way back when to like a smaller press okay um and then uh i was i was convinced i was gonna make my millions i was like yes i have arrived is it is my time yeah and then i saw my cover <laughs> and realized that this book was not <laughs> going to do the things that i had envisioned in my head <laughs> because of the cover oh yeah the the cover exists on Goodreads. So if anyone is like curious, you can go to Goodreads and look at the original cover. It's the green and purple one. You'll see it. You'll okay. see it. Because I've had changed the cover twice since then. Um, uh, but yeah, no. Um, and then I got my first royalty check and it was like $57.62. I talk about this all the time. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it was right. And I published, that was published in 2010. Right. Um, and my very dear friend at the time, and she's still a good friend, uh, Misty Evans, and she's uh, was a great mentor to me. Um, was like, listen, like, have you heard? You heard like like Kindle on Amazon? Like, you you need to be on here, just publishing. And I was like, oh no no. And so there was a call for another book um, from a, another publisher for something that was like paranormal. And I wrote something, and it was rejected. But I was like, I'm gonna put it up on that. Like Misty said, I'm gonna put it up on on you know Amazon, and so I did, and I made the amount for my first royalty for my first book within two hours. Wow! And I was like, ah! and I basically I haven't looked back, but I mean I still have sold things to publishers, and I actually have a book right now that I'm in revisions for that you know will hopefully go out soon in the next couple months or so. So. I, I, I straddled both fences, but um, I do love the freedom of indie and just being my own boss, but it's a lot. Like, no one tells you. There's no way to know. <laughs> There's no way to know. I love it. You've written 100 books. Yeah. 103 now. Yeah. Look at you. I love that. Which, you know, you writing books brings us to the first segment here at the Brown Book Series called Name That Book. We take, <laughs> we take a segment or a character's name, or a synopsis, or something oh, related cool. to one of your books, and you have to name that book. Ah! <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. I, like, I, the problem is I also forget things as soon as yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, all that. Guess what? You still go play this game, Mom. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna, hey. And then I'm gonna start talking trash about how I'm gonna win this game. Watch. <laughs> look, look. Okay. Yeah. This is what happens when I when, when I get on with my friends and shit. It just, I'm not gonna help you either. Oh, oh, harsh. Okay. Harsh, yes. Okay. No, okay. I'm not gonna help you. I'll help you be the bitch ass, but I'm not gonna help you with this game. Okay. <laughs> oh God. Okay. Anyone right. watching this who knows me is like she has a memory like a sieve. So, <laughs> so this gonna be fun right here. Right. Let's do it. Let's put my, my glasses on so I can see you fuck this up. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready. All right, ready to get ready, to dance. Let's go. That's it. Okay, okay, girl. I see you. I see you. All right, here we go. Here we go. Name that book. You gonna get this one? Anything can be fixed with a little duct tape and sass. Oh, that's probably sexy and stilettos. Whoa, hold on. No, no, no. Um, is that? Stunning and stilettos? I'm gonna give you one more chance. Oh, God. One of my fixer heroines. Why did so it's a stilettos book for sure. Oh, 
Oh my gosh. Wait, wait. Let me make sure. Watch, watch, watch it be something dumb that my producers are like, Shay, we mix it up. Because I really believe you might be right. I well, think it's sexy and stilettos. I think it is too, but hold on. That's a Jaya see. reference. Uh, look, my team is like, no, Shay. I'm like... <laughs> That's something Jaya would say. They said I'm helping you because you're my friend. No, I'm not. Listen, <laughs> look, they just chimed in. <laughs> ah! All right, no, it's fine. I'm I can accept if I'm wrong. Which book are they saying it is? Hold on. I told him I said no, it's not. Hold on. They telling me to look. I'm looking. I am. I'm looking. I'm looking. I am looking. And okay. I, I stand corrected. Y'all right. Okay, no problem. I get it. No problem. All right. Which nope. book is it? <laughs> it's a stilettos book. That's all, that's where my brain is going. The Come Home Again. <gasps> no! You were right. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Because I was going through my Fix Your Heroines and I was like the sass and I was like Fix Your Heroines. I was like it has to be Jaya but no. Oh my God! Okay. Listen, Ramsey over here talking about. I, I chimed in just in time. Yeah. You <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I have humid. I have to go extra African for this. I have humiliated myself and my ancestors. <laughs> when you watch this, please forgive me. Oh, please. Okay. Forgive I shall me. try harder next time. Yeah. I can hear my father like. From I was just I about to say your, your daddy is like. <laughs> my father is like. Where am I? Because you would get it in 98 and he'd be like, where are my two points? <laughs> Shay has them. Shay has my your two points. Go and ask her for them. <laughs> okay, okay. 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 Oh, okay. Already it's, an L on the board. Uh, okay, okay. Now, right. since your mind is, is going somewhere. Here we go. Okay. Read book. You ready? All right. And hold on. And Ramsey, you had to be an asshole. He put up there big, too. You don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. I don't like Ramsey already. You do. <laughs> Ramsey, you and I are going to have words. Listen, and I just said, I was like, oh, this is cool. You know, I, you, the producers ain't here. They chilling right now. He's like, ah, I came in just in time. The <laughs> craziness of it all. Tomorrow we trying to cheat. All right, next up. All right. Name book. What's worse than having to watch your sister marry your ex-fiance? Oh, that's How about stilettos. when that fiance fires you from the family business? Yeah, that's sexy and stilettos. Now that's sexy and stilettos. Tell us a little bit about sexy and stilettos. Ramsey, I don't like this font. Change that too. Yeah. Why why <laughs> why she tell us a little bit about sex and stilettos before we go back to our um before we go back to the other name of the book? Because this is one of your big sellers. Yeah, no, sexy and stilettos. That's the one that hit the USA Today list. Yeah. Um, so I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to do a book about female friendship, really. Like, that was really my core. I was like, something like, I was like, I wanted to talk about something, like, write a book that reflected me and my girlfriends. And I remember being so excited about the book when I got the idea, because I, I love the idea of a fake fiance. So poor Jaya Trudeau, her ex-fiance is marrying her sister. And, um, and then he also works for her family business and then he's her boss and he fires her and she, you know, and Jaya is like, she's a very like by the book person. And, but she also sometimes gets very excited about things and goes off script <laughs> and because she's in a meeting one day and goes off script, but the, the people she pitches to are loving what she's saying, but like her ex-fiance and her father are like, that is not what we talked about. And so she makes the pitch of her life and she's so happy. And then they were like, yeah, no, we have a client, but you're fired. And yeah. she is the kind of person who's like always done the right thing, always follow the rules. And she's like, oh my God. And then her father's like, oh, we still expect you at your sister's wedding. And she's like, oh, I can't show up and be a loser. She's like, I don't have a job. Who am I in life? <laughs> Um, and it's just, it's a fun rom-com. And of course, like it's me. So I have to add like a little hint of suspense and Alec. Oh my God. Alec is, Alec is, yeah. Yeah. Alec is that man. It's yeah. like the kind of thing that you pick, you, like you watch all these rom-coms and you picture it happening to you. Like yeah. you walk into an elevator and you're crying and somebody just like holds you. Right. Yeah. It's like, just like, just loving on a black woman when he doesn't even know her. He's like, they're there. You'll be all right. And she's like crying all over his like fancy suit. Yeah. You know? So, and, um, and that was like their first, their first meet cute. And then he sees her later at this like club and he's like, all right, bet. 
And, you know, and she, you know, they, they, they have a little fun and like, and it's very sexy. And I loved that tension between them because like, they don't even realize that how much they need each other. Cause Alec is the fun guy. He is fun. Yes. He's going to be like, want to go, want to ride a drive race car. Yes. And like, he's like, let's go. And you're like, ah! like you're that person screaming in the passenger seat with him. Yes. And he's full of adventure, full of life. And it's, I wanted to do a good contrast because Jaya is so buttoned up, so follows the rules, like really in terms of like the kind of job she needs and how she needs to do that and how she needs to do this. And she fixes everything for everybody. And she just needed someone to like get her to loosen up and have a little fun and, and like try something new. And so, you know, she's like, well, I've always wanted to try this. And he's like, well, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, and he's that person who just like takes her through those things. And of course, you know, he's a billionaire because aren't because a millionaire is not enough. <laughs> And I'm glad you said that, girl. Million won't do. Okay, cool. Just you know, I just, I, I just when I listen, the billionaire thing makes me laugh so hard. But um, but yeah, no, it's it's cute, fun rom com look with a little like hint of suspense. Yeah. And I think in my early days, especially, I was showing like what the evolution of me was going to be because I could not leave out the threat of suspense. I couldn't leave it out. I was like, ooh, but I have to add a little suspense and then alec he's got his whole own like backstory like his family he's a hotel magnate you know he's trying to run away from his responsibility yeah. he's like i just want to be free and people you trying to make me run go in the family business and because <laughs> his um his dad he's like the illegitimate son of the you know hotel magnate and whatever mm -hmm. and so he has all these feelings but he and he loves his stepmother to like no end he sure and does he, i love that yeah and she's the matriarch and adele 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 is a troublemaker she's like you know she's she is the one she's lady danbury before like we all yeah. were watching bridgerton right um right. and she is just a meddler and she lo loves the family but she's like she's like you know she just says what she says. She just she does not take prisoners. So it was a great like most matriarchs do. <laughs> what? Like most matriarchs do. Just be yeah, like, you know. And yeah. but like really, I mean the the obviously the romance, but the core is really the love story between Jaya and her two best friends, Micah and Rika. Because when Jaya gets fired, she you know takes in part in a little retail therapy and buys like a three hundred or three thousand dollar pair of shoes and. They're like, look, we'll all go in on these shoes and we'll all just borrow the shoes. It's great. It's Sisterhood of the Traveling Stilettos. Um, and so that's sexy in stilettos. And of course, they fall in love along the way. Isn't it awesome? <laughs> this this one um always it reminded me of um it just started coming on television now. The um the veil. Um, it was a hallmark, like uh, something, the magical veil or something. Uh three friends, they all went in together and purchased a a, a, a veil. Oh. Yeah, I love it. So, yeah, it's like whoever gets has the veil and they're it, they're fall in love and get married and it goes. Yeah, yeah, no, I love that. Yeah, I was like, I this is that. so cute. All right, cool. Let's see. Name that book. All right. Her ex sounds like he does that, like he deserves it anyway. I just hadn't counted on falling for her myself. Her, her, her ex, he's an asshole, honey. She was over there crying, bitching about him. And this dude was like, I'm going to get this book. And then, <laughs> uh, I have a lot of exes. You do. Is that Big Ben? It's not. I'm going to give you one more. Her ex sounds like he deserves it anyway. I just hadn't kind of on falling for her myself. Oh, Mr. Dirty? You that's what I'm talking about, Nani. Yes, girl. Yep, yep, yep. That's what I'm talking about, friend. Yes, honey. Yes. I've written a lot of shitty exes. <laughs> yeah. And so I had to like, I was like mental roller decks. Yo, for a moment there, I was like, her asked me to write a series called Shitty Exes or something. Oh like, my god. I I no, you, I'm just look, write that down. You do, girl. And look, and the women that made them whole. I'm just right? like, yeah, right? Oh yeah. my god, yeah, no, Mr. Dirty. Oh god, yeah. One of the London billionaires. Oh, this trope is so funny because okay, so first of all, it's a billionaire trope because it's a billionaire. And I like, I, but I'm sorry, the, the cover, the them three books, I love those covers. 
Yeah. They was hot. Oh, which ones did you see? Are you talking about the object ones? Yeah, the one yeah. um that had the one the one had the brandy glass. Um, yes, 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 yeah. yes. Um, like yeah, that. no. So those originally um were these like very sexy guys. Um, but then I kind of was like, oh, let's get a revamp on the series. And so yeah, the objects, and I love it because when you see object covers, you everyone has the dark ones because it like it usually signifies dark romance. Yes, I am not dark romance. Um, and so I was like. I can still have object covers though. Let's, you know, I was like, I want to twist it a little and make it bright and poppy and colorful. Hey, um, so, I love that. I love yeah. it. So yeah, no, Mr. Dirty. I mean, it's a classic billionaire. It takes place in my favorite city in the world next yeah. to Accra, um, but across home. So, you know, but yeah. so London. Um, and then these were just like fun, funny standalones. So this is the um, hate my neighbor trope, you know, like. Yeah. Yeah. Bad neighbor. Uh, you got uh, the heroine who, like, you know, she, her, her, she has this boyfriend, and then they break up, and he's awful. He's really, I mean, he's really terrible. <laughs> yeah. And um, and then her neighbor, she just wants to get some sleep, and you know, go to her job. She's in marketing. You know, they're always in marketing. And because no one knows, knows that. As as I look at her. She no always knows what the marketing girls actually do. So that's why it's easy to be like, they're in marketing. They have a meeting. <laughs> they're taking these files over. Um, and, but her neighbor, he is just like always playing loud music. He's always got women over. He's always like, I'm going hard in the bedroom, which is like right on the other side of hers and making women scream. And she's like, ah! <laughs> um, but then, you know, and then she goes and she's like, please turn it down. And he's naked, of course. And she's like, who answers the door naked? I mean, so it's like the whole, that kind of trope. But then, you know, they start, you know, talking, they actually become friends. And he's like, I'm going to help you with a little X payback, you know? Cause like one night she just like loses it and just is like, and then he's terrible. And every time yeah. I turn around there, he is, oh, life is terrible. And he offers to help her. And of course they fall in love. And she's like, you're a selfish prick. <laughs> But pretty much. But you said their banter is so cool though. Yes. It's yeah. just I love the if it's not quick and snappy, yeah, I don't want it. Yeah. Because yeah. I talk really fast. Yeah. And like in our house, my husband and I, it's like if you like one of our favorite things to do, it's like and this comes from my family. My cousins and I do this too, but it's like you'll sing a song, it's like, oh, I have to go to West Philadelphia. And someone in the house better go born and raised, like quick. Like right. no time. And then the other person or someone else will shout, you know, on the playground is where I spend most of my days. Like yeah. that's, you had better be quick in the house. Otherwise yeah. you're going to miss all the jokes and the fun and the, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so like, I, if it's not like that in a book, I'm just like, yeah, I like that too. That's how we are. We got this thing. We were like bonjour from when the commercial when the dude was like, I got off the internet, bonjour. So now some people, where you get that from? Internet. Everybody has to be like, bonjour. Right? Like, you gotta cool. like, and you can tell if, if you know, you know. And if you know, so you know. like, you're yeah. like, you just, you have to be snappy and respond. And then like, sometimes even my daughter does it now. And as, as she's getting older, because you know, I mean, they don't know any references. But like yeah. as she gets older now, knows some of the references, you know, it's like um, she'll just start like start to spit them back at you, and it's like, oh, her. okay, yes, okay, okay. I see you. I love it. I absolutely love it. So yeah, Mister Dirty, this bookie yes. of the London London's billionaires. All right, cool, y'all. Look, she's doing good. Yeah, uh, let's keep it going. Next oh, up, wow. okay, I'm ready. Name that book. I never stopped fighting for her, no matter the stakes. A year ago, I found out I was a long-lost prince, but with one lie, that's all been undone. Bastard prince. Bastard prince. I like that. I said, she, why is she named that boy a bastard prince? He already feeling some type of way in her ass. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Okay, so that's a duet. So it starts with Royal Bastard and Bastard Prince. Yeah. And, um, and Lucas... Oh, Lucas is so sexy. So Lucas grew up, he is a son, um, he's the bastard son of a, of a king he did not know, and he grew up a con man and a thief. So the prince and the pauper, basically. Yes. Um, and so he, his, uh, he, his brother finds him, his brother at the time, uh, and they meet them in the first duet, which is Cheeky Royal Cheeky, uh, Cheeky Royal Cheeky King. 
And Sebastian, his brother, finds him and he's like, oh, by the way, you're my brother. And he's like, ha, 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 no, and you don't want none of the smoke. I have problems you won't like. And his brother's like, well, you are a prince. I don't know what to tell you. Right. And so, um, and through that book, you know, they kind of, he kind of comes to terms and, and he's like, oh, I guess I am a prince. But then in Royal Bastard and Bastard Prince, you really see him struggling with that, who he was before. And um, and his brother asked him to do one thing and he's like, okay, look, we have a, you know, a, a dignitary's daughter is coming to New York. Um, I just need you to like, go see her, take her around the city, make right. sure she doesn't get cheated in an apartment, whatever. Just do me a solid, you know, this guy, he's a problem. He's a thorn in my side. So if I can like help out his daughter, he'll, he'll be quiet. Right. And, and Lucas wants to be useful. I think Lucas really struggles with like his role in the, in the, royal line and like his past and he's like people are going to find out he was never caught which is great but he's like and also can i stop being a thief and a con man because it's really fun and right. i really like it and i see it as my personal identity and so brina um she you know she's the daughter of a dignitary but she wants to do her own thing and her parents don't listen to her and who she is and she just kind of wants her own kind of bout of freedom and they she goes to new york and you know, has like the worst roommate experience ever. And so Lucas is like, okay, fine. Like, he's like, all right, you you could just stay with me. You know, I have an extra room and obviously I'm a prince now. So I live in a fabulous palatial pad because I'm a billionaire. Because billionaire, millionaire is just not enough. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, in the first book, really, they're doing that like roommate trope. It's like, you yeah. know, attracted to each other. It's fine. We're going to, everything's fine. We're not going to think about seeing each other naked at all. It's fine. Except everyone's ridiculously attractive. And as they fall in love, you know, you really get Lucas like struggling with who he is because his past comes back to haunt him. Right. Um, and they've, and then there's also like a thread of like royal intrigue um, with people after uh, the royal siblings and Lucas is trying to keep Rena safe. And so Ambassador Prince, it kind of all, like all comes to coalesce and come to a head. And so he's been told that, um, that you know, he has to do a job. Um, otherwise, he's going to be exposed. And so he has to make choices about what he's going to do. So that's Ambassador he, Prince. He hooked it up, too. I was like, look at him. And then, and then with his brother, I was like... Uh, you know, I thought it was going to be a whole bunch of more trickery or something. Because I was like, the way he's coming at him on some real, like, I'm looking for you, bro. You know, I'm come, yeah. almost like I'm coming to get you, bring you home, kind of. And you go, yep. you know, yeah. So I was like, look at this. Let me find out. Okay. Yeah. And then and then they have a sister, too. So. Yeah. 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 That's, so that's the next yeah. one. That's one of my favorites. Because, like, it's like. It's a princess, but not a princess. I like turning a lot of these tropes up to their heads. Yes, you are. You, yeah. I said, not, not got the, the trickiness with her. Okay, cool. Yeah. Last up, name that book. Okay. Betrayal was such a simple word, but such a complex emotion. The woman I loved had turned her back on me, taking everything and thrown it away. Yes, Bridge of Lies. This is your new release, yes. Bridge of Lies. Hold on, we gotta look at the. Hold on, where's the cover, y'all? Where's the cover? Hold on, honey. Let's yes. look at this old cover. Girl, yeah. what is he thinking about? What is he doing? He's like, he's like, she betrayed me, and I hate her, but she's still fine though. So we still gonna get it. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what he, I'm like, I said, do we got? He thinking? He got to think with his shirt off like that though. Like, yes, like he you know? does. <laughs> like the way he oh, thinks, Andrew. girl. That's Andrew Biernot. Beautiful as always. Very handsome. He's, he's very, very handsome. Very handsome. So tell he's us about... Lovely. He's so nice. I know, girl. Tell us about Bridge of Lies. Bridge, Bridge of Lies, Lies. Okay. is out March 1st. Yeah. You gotta go get it. So tell us a little bit about it. So Bridge of Lies is book two in my Speak No Evil trilogy. Yes. And so um, you've got... Bridge Edgerton and Emma Varma, and they, the trope for this particular trilogy is um, enemies to lovers, best friends, older brother. So Emma's older brother um, was murdered and she's been asked, she's asked Bridge and the other London Lords uh, for help in capturing him and bring, bringing about vengeance. Um, and they were all part of a secret society. 
when they were uh, leaving Eaton. And Bridge says he's going to help her, but at the end of it, he's like, no, 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 it's too dangerous. And so she gets mad at him a lot. And Emma's a hothead. Emma, <laughs> Emma, will, <laughs> Emma does a lot of things that are um, not in her best interest. And Bridge is forever like super controlled, trying to control right. everything in every scenario. And so, at, you know, in the first book, they um, have to enter into this marriage, you know, fake marriage, because Bridge is in a spot of trouble. And she says, if I marry you and help you, will you help me get vengeance and let me be part of it? And he's like, yes, yes, fine. OK. Um, but then, you know, of course, they catch feelings because they're both two beautiful people and have been in love since they were teenagers. <laughs> and But neither one of them wants to admit that because I can't stand you. Um, but then um, Emma does something that Bridge thinks is a betrayal, but Emma has good reason because she was trying to help him and he is big mad about it. So they spend um, this particular book, they got to work through some things. They got to go to couples therapy, um, except in couples therapy, they're using, they're, they're actually physically fighting a lot. <laughs> um, and, you know, and it opens up, there's a, a, I'll give a little teaser, like he's mad at her, at, but he's like, but you're not leaving the situation because I still need to keep you safe. So I'm going to handcuff you to me so we can go to bed in the one bed in this mansion that we live in. Oh, yeah. I, see, I can't. Just so she can't <laughs> escape. Because the thing is, Emma is Trixie. Listen, she will pick a lock in a minute. She will. You can't just be like, okay, go to bed. Yeah. She's not going to do that. She's going to be like, they sleep. I'm going to sneak out this window and repel that. Exactly. She's she wild. So, like, I can see, I, I understand where he was going with that. <laughs> we like, know you understand. You wrote the book. I said. Sometimes um, these characters, like, I want to make them do something. And they're like, no, I don't want to do that. And you have to just kind of go, okay, fine. Just like, just let you, you do your thing. Just do you. And then it's like, oh, it all worked out in the end. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, no. So he handcuffs her to him and he's like, you're not leaving here today. <laughs> I absolutely love that. I cannot wait. You know, well, when, when all the reviews start pouring in about this book, it's going to be awesome. So, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, make sure you go pick it up. It's out. Actually, uh, let's see, March, yesterday. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's out. Yay! Yes. No, no, no. So, no, it's March 1st. So, yes. Yeah, yesterday. So, yeah. 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 I'm, yeah. I'm super excited for it. I This 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 trilogy closes out my London Lord's world. And so, it's been, like, it's been a three-year adventure with these with these boys and their antics and the women who love them. And Emma has been a fan favorite from the beginning, the very first book, Big Ben. So I can't wait for you guys to dive in and read about, you know, what happens in that one bed scenario when you're, you know, handcuffed to your husband who you also don't like very much at the moment. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of being handcuffed uh, in the bed, it brings us to the next segment here, the Brown Series <laughs> called... Who'd you rather? Oh, yes. Yes. Well, yes. we took your heroes and we pit them against each other. You let oh, us know. My you hero, you make me choose between my men. Yes, oh. bro. One night stand. That's it, Nana. That's it. You know my you know, you know my stand. I'm talking about up against the wall, let them draw fall. I'm talking about let the brown. All right. All right. You, you know, know what I'm saying? Okay. Yes. Okay, you ready, girl? All right. I'm good. I'm good. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's All do it. Right, let's do it. All right. First up, who'd you rather? Dylan. No, or Zephyr. Oh, come on. We yeah, yeah, we come on. Come on what come on which one? That's what we want to know. <laughs> <laughs> come on both of them. Okay. I mean, if, if that's an option. You know, um ah. okay, so the Denimon series, like okay, I'm gonna age myself, guys. Um, but there was a show when I was little called Rags to Riches. Wait, and okay. it was like, I mean, it was a weird, wacky show. The one with Tisha and Travel was in? Yes. Yeah, I love that show. I love that show. Yes. Okay, yes. so like a random millionaire, multimillionaire, whatever, he like ad like adopts or like fosters a whole bunch of these little kids. They're yeah. all from like different racial ethnic backgrounds, which is what I loved about it. Yes. And Tisha Campbell was in it. Yeah. And um, and so when I conceived this this like series, this like family saga series. I was like, what would happen if you had this black lady and her husband died and, you know, she had a kid and then 
like her husband's business partner, you know, like they were just, you know, close, friendly, and he divorced his wife and his wife is crazy and whatever. Um, and then like they, and he has two boys and like they get together and they're like a little odd Brady bunch. And then they start adopting a bunch of kids. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes, yes. Okay. So Dylan, um, Dylan is another like, Dylan is FBI. Yes, because Derek's the race correct. Okay, so Dylan is FBI and he has, you know, he's had some cases go bad and that's like really affected him. And the, no, what I did... No, no. Yeah. We don't care about that. We want to know who I... you want to knock down. I say you all with that trying. No. Zephyr. Okay. 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 Now you can tell me why Zephyr over Dylan. Okay, because Zephyr, why, I like why? the trope. I think I dig the trope better because Zephyr is like um Zephyr and Malia. Zephyr is the TA, is Malia's TA, and yeah. it's strictly like verboten that they should be hooking up. Yeah. And they try really hard to not hook up. They try really hard. And when they do, it's really hard. Okay, so she going with that. Yeah, y'all saw how she was trying to get around all that and stuff. We were like, no, bitch, which one you want? <laughs> fine, Zephyr. Fine. Okay, okay, okay fine. Next, next, next up, right? Nathan, you made all over. I'm mad. All over again. Here you go. Keep that same energy. There you go. Who would you rather? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Nick God, oh, or Ezel? <laughs> yo, yo. Yo, 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 yo. East, he's freakier. East is free. I went with East too. <laughs> I I said, I'm going with East. He's freakier and I love his name. Yeah, yeah, East has voyeur energy. Yes, yes. So, all right. You yeah. Ready? Who'd, yeah. You, who'd you rather? Bryce or Dax? Dax. I went with Dax too. Yeah, Dax, because Dax is already, he's kind of a bad boy, and he just, he can't get it together. <laughs> yeah, I, I said Dax, yeah, he, he sexually, yeah, I let Dax do me. Yeah, because I, Bryce is, like, too, he's too golden boy. He, and I like a golden boy, but, like, I if I have to choose, I'm going to pick Dax. Yeah, we try to have, we try to have a good time in the bed that night, honey, yeah. All right, <laughs> next up. I told me they had the name wrong, but they told me no because I was calling. I don't know why I kept saying Zachary, and they were like, "Shay is just Zach, Zach Andrews, or Jared Maloney." God, um, <laughs> Jared, you were with Jared, yeah. And here's why, because J I think I have an affinity for Jared because he's like desperate to be seen. Yeah. In his book, like he's desperate, like he's just begging for yeah. someone to see him. Yeah. And like under all that like bluster and like I'm a billionaire, I'm gonna, he just wants someone to see him. So I'm I'm going with Jared. Okay, I went with Zach for for the same reasons. Let me tell you why. Because I was like, yeah, Jared, but Jared looked like he might get in him, make love like a woman, be all touchy feeling and want to. I want. Some that's all I want to do. All night. I mean, that just do that. That's all I want. I'm going Jared. I'm still going Jared. I'm still going Jared. Okay, okay. I get you. I okay. get you. And if I want to be crest, I don't want to be crest that night. I just want to be. <sighs> Last up. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd you, you know, the, the, the girl, the nutty professor, the, the grandma. I want a relationship. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, act right. Listen, who'd you rather? I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. Beckett or Shane? Oh! <laughs> that's that's so nonchalant, huh? Beckett or Shane? I'm going to say Beckett because he's a swimmer and you know his shoulders are, wow. You know that wingspan? Yeah, man? Wing <laughs> what? I said Beckett too. <laughs> Oh my god, I said back it too. This don't make no damn sense. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Nana. Yes. Author's moments. Office romance. What's your most urgent priority for the rest of the year? Ah, okay. Um, urgent priority. Really, I mean, I'm focused the most on these books, closing out the Speak No Evil trilogy. Um, I'm like I'm I just want to bring like that whole world to conclusion like the best way right. that also leaves room for them to come back and visit um which is always what i try to do um but then 
Told you she tricky, y'all. I, I am tricky. <laughs> With that, I have a new series I'm so excited about. It's called, uh, my series called Gentleman Rogues. And all I'll tell you about it, I, w- I want to tell you everything, but all I'll tell you about it is think, okay, you know the movie Kingsman? Yeah. With Sherrod Edgerton? Okay. I love the Kingsman, girl. The Kingsman, right? Okay. It's Kingsman, but I fixed it because you know how when you watch the first Kingsman and like there's that girl Kingsman and yeah. like, and she helps him out and you're like, oh, they're going to get together. And like, we're all and shipping them. And we're yeah. like, yeah, this is great. This is going to be awesome. And then he picks like the chick who's locked up and who's like, I'm gonna give you the booty. And I'm like, stop it. And so I fixed Kingsman and I'm like, it's gonna be like the strong girl who can help you in missions and stuff like that. Like that's, it's it's that kind of world. So the gov- secret government organization and you have these people who save the world sort of thing, yeah. But like w- all the guys that go in are like, are bad boys. <laughs> they all messed up. <laughs> in some colossal, hilarious way. <laughs> and um, and then their families send them to the gentleman rogues place and um, then they become super spies. You know what? I can't wait for that. Okay. Yeah, I cannot wait for that. You gotta let me, you gotta, I need all the arcs, all the books on this one. Yes. I'm, read this. I'm so excited for the series. I cannot wait. Oh my God, I love it. All right, author's moments. And being a novelist. <laughs> What did you learn a little too late? Let newsletter. Me. Make a newsletter. Liz, I knew you should make a face. I said she finished. <laughs> newsletter. <laughs> you didn't do a newsletter? In the Not when I started. I had, I had like two years. I didn't okay. know. I didn't know what I didn't know. I, so I didn't, like, I didn't know. Like, I didn't think it was important. Like, I just didn't know that I should have one. Because right. also, like, when I released my first book, I was like, oh, I thought like I was just gonna get another publisher and another publisher and another publisher and I, I, I did not know newsletter. Yeah, newsletter. Yeah, we we I have a hard time here because even though you know the team does they they they're like Shay, you 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 gotta say a man, you gotta at least put a little Shay baby on it. I'd be like, yeah. well, how how often they like Shay? You can't send out a newsletter every six months. I'm like, why not? Yeah. They like, <laughs> I mean that like I, that's the number one thing I talk to people about. I'm like, um, talk to your people, and they're like, people are like, oh, but what if I don't hear anything to say? I'm like, no, talk to them. Even if yeah. you're like, I went to Walmart today, picked up some of this and this. This is what I'm doing with my hair right now. Something. Um, and this is why, and this is what I'm thinking about or ideating for a story. Talk to your people. Communicate with them. They want to hear from you. I see. That makes sense. Okay, cool. Let's see. Author's moments. If you could have tea with one fictional character of yours, who would it be? Mine? Yes, girl. Uh, Ariel. From um, she's from the Royals world, Ooh. and then she gets her own book in um, to Love of Prince and uh, Return of the Prince to Love of Prince. She is, she's like the best kind of sidekick in, like in the early Royals books. Like she mm-hmm. and she and Penny have like this banter. Like she's the voice of reason, but she all she's like she's like secretly trolling you <laughs> the whole time. It's like she's always there with a snide comment, but like her comments are facts though. And it's like, no one wants to hear, she's like, no one listen to me. I'm just over here talking sense, but okay. <laughs> We're just going to dive right into this craziness. Right. Um, and then, yeah. And she's that, she's that, that voice throughout that whole first Royal series. And then she finally gets her own book. So I think Ariel, cause that was Ariel. a lot for her. Yeah. Okay. I absolutely love it. All right. Author's moments. If you could sit down with your 15 year old self, what would you tell her? Oh my God. It's not personal. Not everyone likes coconut. Oh, well, I- <laughs> <laughs> well, or pineapple or strawberries or whatever, because I would take things to heart. Like, yeah. like people destroyed me with some of the things that they would say in terms of like, oh, I don't, you're not pretty or you're not this or you're not that or you're not. Yeah, man, people are just cruel. And mm. I would take people those are things. are cruel. Right. And I would take those things to heart, like, like it was me. And I was like, none of that was about, is about you. It's only about them. And sometimes it's not even personal. They're like, you're great. I just happen to like this. And so like, like I always laugh because like, I love coconut and my husband, like, he's like, oh, like acts like I'm trying to poison him. I'm like, I'm drinking coconut water. What's up? He's like, oh, stop it. 
not everyone likes coconut. It has nothing to do with who you are, your value, your worth as a person. Like, and that did, that did a number of my self esteem then. And like, if I had that hadn't done a number of my self esteem, man, I'd have been like such a baddie from such an early age. But right. that's what I would tell fifteen year old me. Like, it's it's not you. It's not okay. personal. Yeah, I love it. All right, author's moments. What would your opinion be? Oh, I have so many. I mean, I have several secret pen names too. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. I, I, Kelly with a Q is what my name was supposed to be. My mother was trying to be going to be fancy. Um, <laughs> um, but my father was like, she's going to have a Ghanaian name. What is this nonsense? Um, <laughs> so probably some variation of it, like, Kelly and then Kelly Roberts, maybe. Um, oh, because I used to go to the bookstore when I first, you know, first started writing, and I would go to Nora Roberts was Queen Supreme. I'm um, yeah. still is Lady Nora. Yeah. Um, and I would picture visualize my books on the shelf next to next to her. And I was like, man, if I had the, the pen name Roberts, like people would just accidentally pick up my book. So yeah, it'd be like Kelly Roberts or something like that. I absolutely love that. That's hot though. I love it. Kelly with a Q, mom. With a Q? No, no. Your daddy would like, no, that's ghetto Guyana. No. <laughs> he was like, what kind of Ghanaian woman names her daughter Kelly? And my mom's like, I, I thought it was cute. Because my my maiden name is Quainor. So she's like, it could be Kelly Quainor. You see? <laughs> I like the main name's cute though. I like that. Yeah, but my dad was like, She's going to have a Ghanaian name. What is this nonsense? <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love it. Dead or alive. If you were hosting a dinner party and could invite five people from any era, who would it be? Oh. oh. Uh, real people, not fictional people. Uh, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Damn it. There goes, there goes Lizzie Bennett. Is that, um, you know, I'm like, just let her know. No, real people. <laughs> Okay. Um, Cleopatra. Um, and uh, I always like mess up her name, but there was the woman king um, from Namibia, um, no Nubia, the Nubian queen, uh, and she like gave the Romans a run for their money. So her, um, and she was like, "You are not taking over my lands. Um, it's we about to run these hands." Um, so those two, and then for more recent times. Um, uh, uh Anna James, um, um Dr. Maya. <laughs> um my Angela, I have one more. Ooh. Probably Michelle Obama. Look at you. I just want to sit there and go, girl. <laughs> didn't you just want to like run around and just like redecorate that whole White House? Like I just feel like <laughs> girl, I would have started from the outside. I would have painted that bitch black first. Right. Of all. I'd be like, I'd be out there with the spray paint, like, don't worry about me. I'm just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh my God. That's a hot ass dinner table. Look at you. I like yeah. that. Now, uh -huh. Nana. Yes. Girl, this uh, brown. <laughs> Bringing the, 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 the boobies into it. Listen, I told my husband, I said, oh, I need, Nana's calling me. She's brown. He said, no, 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 no. Laverne and Shirley, let them be. <laughs> I said, but she needs me. He said, no, no, no. I, I do like, need you. <laughs> so, I do need you. I need all the nipples. The nipples. <laughs> all the nipples. All of it. Explain of the brown nipple challenge, please. Okay. So um, back in the day, 2020, yes. you know, um, when the fog started, um, obviously with the uprisings um, of that summer and just generally how I've been feeling in romance for quite some time, I was as frustrated as the rest of the world. And I wanted to, you know, take to the streets, but in my own way that I could do that was sustainable. And so one of the things that people are always talking about and being a black woman writing romance um, and in this industry, there's so much racism. People right. look you dead in the eye and be like, oh, I don't read black heroines because I need the characters to look like me so I can identify with them. While they read like whole ass shifter alien romances, I'm like, eh. 
guys. Um, and so what I, and, and then people really were like, okay, I should read more diverse, but like, where do I even find these books? Like, you know, broken Google. Um, or if people did read diverse books, they always named the same five authors. Like, yeah. look, Miss Bev is great. She's right. amazing. Yeah. Okay. She's master class, right? right? Alyssa Cole, master class, right. right? Kennedy Ryan, like all these amazing, like Talia Hipper, great. Amazing friends of mine, yeah, but they're not the only one that I love. Yeah, but they're not, there are thousands of yeah. other authors who are also amazing. Yeah, but we can't even talk about them or mention them or give them like they they're having a hard time with discoverability, getting seen, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I was like, guys, there are more than five black authors, but that's mm. like those are the ones people are like non melanated folks are like, well, that, those are safe. I know that those are you know. Yes that's safe reading yeah. and i'm like now and so what i really wanted to do is just support authors of color particularly black authors but all my other um minority authors as well and just be like if you're writing romance and love stories and you yourself your characters don't have to be brown or have brown nipples like i'm not going to police what you write because i understand that in this industry and trying to market in this industry the fact that we are here, we exist, we are earning money. Some of us are earning really good livings and we are not the beauty, quote unquote beauty standard. Mm -hmm. um, and we are still existing and still writing love stories. That is not, that is an act of resistance in and of itself. So that's all that matters to me is that you be an author of color and you're writing romance done. Right. And then for me, what I said for the challenge is my idea was to get um, my readers that were already following me and reading me to jump to these books. So I was saying, well, if I'm doing this, then the book should be not necessarily too, too dark romance, um, have that same kind of like snappy, fun energy. Yeah. Um, but essentially, if you're like, if you're an author of color, you're writing romance, come, post up. Um, and uh, it's a monthly book challenge. And I announced the book at the end of the, the Brown Book Challenge for the previous month. I announced the new book. And then we, I encourage everyone to buy it you know, or get it from the library, whatever the case is. And then we read it and then we have the author on because one of the key things to discoverability is and getting people who wouldn't ordinarily pick up your book to pick up your book is when people feel like they know the author, like right. they've seen them and they're like, oh, hey, they look, yeah. okay. Um, they, they seem cool, they were really funny. Uh -huh. And then mm -hmm. like just, just that moment to make someone stop and go, oh, but why haven't I read that before? Um, and so then I invite, them on to the to on Instagram and we you know we, we talk about the book we talk about their first instance seeing a brown nipple in a book um because like I mean there's nothing worse than when you get to like especially as a kid <laughs> I was reading romance far too early yeah. um but at the ripe old age of 13 there I was like you know it's always <laughs> spicy historicals and I was like the nipples were pink always pink 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 and I was like yeah. wow white girls got some really pink nipples <laughs> like Wow. And I was like, and I would just look down and be like, my nipples do not look like that. Right. And so, but that just was a signifier to me that like, I was never going to be seen as the heroine, as the one deserving of love, as the main character. Like that just kept solidifying. It was just that messaging over and over. And there's so many of us writing these amazing books, sometimes with non-melanated people with non-melanated folks and that's fine. Like I said, what you as a, as a, as a black and brown author choose to write, your business, you are making decisions about you for you and your career, but I want to support you because you are doing the thing when it is already so difficult and it is so racist out in these book streets. Right. So Girl. Um, that's, that's the that's the challenge, essentially. And we've been going um, two years now. We're in our second yeah. year. And, yeah. Yeah. I saw I get on this old brown nipple challenge, honey. Team up with Nana, girl. Yes. I love it. Absolutely love it. Nana, this has brought us to the end of my interview. We have one question left. But before we ask this last question, I want you to tell everybody, everything, all things Nana, where can they go to um, get your, uh, all your social media handles? Get your, your, yes. Where can they go to get your books, website, the whole hoopla? Okay, Whew. we're going to go through the whole list. All right, the whole you list. just can find me, <laughs> nanamalone.com. You go there, you can find everything else. Um, but you can also find me on Instagram at nanamalonewriter, on Facebook at nanamalonewriter, on TikTok at nanamalonewriter, and on Twitter, nanamalone. Um, 
Also on my website, you can grab my newsletter and you'll get a free book sent to you. Um, I'm trying to think of all the other places. That's where you can find me. And um, you can find my books on Goodreads if that's where you get your recommendations from. But I'm also available on all vendors. So if you read on Apple, Kobo, Nook, Google Play, you can find my books. Just type in the name, Not I'm Alone. It's easy to find. Absolutely love it. Love it. Nana, last yes. question. Yes. If you were writing a book about your life, what would the title be? Oh, that one's easy. It's the name of my business, Sankofa Girl. Um, so Sankofa is a, uh, it's, there are these Adinkra sayings in Ghana and they're symbols. So I'm wearing one that signifies um, uh, love never loses its way home. So it means the power of love, right? So Sankofa means, and you'll see that tattooed on a lot of people. Janet Jackson has a Sankofa. It just means um, to return, to take knowledge and return, right? And that would be the title because as a child of the diaspora who's like lived all over the world, like all I ever want to do is take all my experiences and bring them to nourish other people like me and be like, hey, I did this. You can do it too. So I already have the title of Sankofa Girl. It's the name of my business. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a well, like a warm Brown Book series applause to Nana Malone. Thank you. This was so fun. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy that you came on here. Hold one second for me, okay? Okay. Hold on. All right, Brown Bookers, if you love that interview, and I know you did, please like and share, subscribe, and all the other good stuff. Um, the Raw Experience, the tickets are still on sale. RawExperience.com is R-A-W experience.com. I'm going down October 20th and 29th in Alexandria, Virginia. There's a, you just do not want to miss this. We're going to have some of your favorite authors there. It's going to be wonderful. We're about to, um, seeking we trick and honor into being there. Um, so she, y'all can come and talk to her too because she is a hoot, honey. And you can see, look, y'all better see us how we get, how we do face to face in person <laughs> oh god oh god so make sure you check that out all right i see you guys next week oh and tonight also seven o'clock you can find us on cruise radio that's 102.8 everything will be in the description box below y'all be good uh wear your mask please be safe open up your brown book baby it's for you it's for us the fantasies no one can judge us no one can judge us this is for Open up your...